For my sake, my grandfather uh, played guitar, played piano, wrote music, but that's what, that wasn't his job. But he, he was, he was, yes, it was a passion. And I think he passed it on to my mother. My mother sang in a choir. And my dad absolutely has no talent whatsoever musically, <laughs> nothing. And my big brother started first, Saba Saba, real name's Alex Kiria. He was a rapper. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got the influence of rap. And then my older brother, uh, the very famous one, Bampino, he was doing dancehall and reggae. Mm -hmm. So I got that influence. My mother liked the blues and, and uh, the ABBA and Beatles. So I got that vibe as well. My dad was into Congolese music. I got that vibe. So I think one of the, the benefits I've had from coming from my kind of family is that I can be very versatile because I was always the young guy who had so many people to look up to with different genres. And you had a choice as well. So no, really, I wanted to be a rapper and an actor. And I would, I would rap and I would be the, the worst rapper you'd ever hear. I was terrible and really? I knew it. But every time I opened my mouth to sing, the crowd would go quiet. How old were you when you had this first moment of, you know, you sing to the crowds and you see the impact your voice has on them? That was uh, before I decided that I was going professional. I think I probably was about eight or seven. There's this one is, is really silly. I, I hate that I have to tell you this story. My big sister, Maureen, there was this new song, uh, there was this song by Three T's, you know, you remember the Three T's? Yeah. I will do anything, girl, anything. So I knew the lyrics, and she wanted me to sing for her friends on our visiting day. She was in a boarding school, and she needed me to go into the girls' dormitory, but I was a guy. So what do they do? They dress me up as a girl. <laughs> so I could make it past the metro. But uh, <laughs> I got inside, and then all the girls were on the beds up, down, and they had to be quiet and they were holding it in and I sang the whole song with my eyes closed because I could not look at them. And when I decided, you know what, let me just open at the end. And everyone was just staring. And then that's when I felt the power of, uh, of my voice or of, my, music. of music. And I knew that that's, that's what I wanted. Not, not in the dress though, but yeah. Now you're the king of Moyo. I don't know if I pronounced this correctly. You did, you did. What does it mean? Ugandan soul music, as I started calling it. I, I used to call it uh, Afrofusion until I started trying to come up with something that was my own. You know, fusing what I'd learned from the traditional styles to my influences in Uganda and mixing them with the R&B and soul music that I so much loved. What's your next step? What's the big dream and vision for you? My dream has always been to to be the greatest musician I can be from Uganda internationally, you know, travel the world and make my, my country proud, wave the flag, because for so long we saw things on TV, you know, done by international artists or some artists from South Africa, or, you know, and I always felt like, come on, we can do this, we can get out, uh, out there and, and really show people what we're made of. I wanted to be an inspiration. throughout your entire life, which event in the world has touched you the most in a positive or negative way? It was the time when there was so much war news, uh, countries fighting each other, with the young people caught in the crossfire. I remember just watching the TV and muting the volume and I just watched the pictures. I got my guitar and I started singing and that's how I composed the song, I Will Sing. So I, I wrote that song to all the world leaders to inspire them or to remind them to be humane. Do young people here feel like what's happening, whatever it is, yeah. showbiz or politics, right. it doesn't matter. Outside Africa is completely unrelated to that, to, to what's happening here. Do you oh, feel yeah. like we live in two completely different <laughs> we planets? Do. We do. Um, the priorities we have here in Uganda per se are totally different from the priorities out there. For example, the Western world, they have certain systems that are already put in place. When a child is born, as a parent, you know they will go to school. 
they'll get formal education, which is not exactly the same here. You know, so by that being a foundation that you grow up with either a family that's that's doing well or not doing well, that difference can actually affect you as a child. So as you grow, your priorities are totally different from what you see in the Western world. Musically, I've been thinking about what is the musical genre, I guess, that right. connects all people around the world, that's common to all cultures, all geographies, no matter where you come from. And I came personally, I came to a conclusion that that musical genre is a lullaby. Yeah. Because every single mother in this world sings a lullaby. A lullaby. Is there a Ugandan lullaby? Yeah, there is a song, a very common one, and it goes like Tulo Tulo Kwatomwana Wotomu Kwati Guri Mulogo Sebo Lira Tulo Tulo Kwatomwana Wotomu Kwati Guri Mulogo Nyabo Lira and what it means is, dear sleep, take good care of this child so she can sleep. And if you don't, you're a witch, so you better listen to me. Cause you make it make all the sense. I love you, but you making me go insane. You making me go insane. You making me go insane. What do you think connects us as human beings, no matter where you come from? Acts of love. How we treat each other. Love will connect us on any platform, if we just let it be.